Welcome. Um, today we're going to talk about absolute value equations and specifically how to solve them and then what they actually mean. So I thought we'd first start out talking just for a second, or a few seconds actually, about um, what absolute value means and how you notice that it's something is absolute value. Usually mathematically when we represent absolute value we put some sort of number or symbol inside of two straight up and down lines. Now if they're curved like this, obviously that's parentheses and brackets is a whole other headache to worry about, but neither one of those represent absolute value, just straight up and down lines. If you see lines this time, just assume they're straight up and down even if they're not. When I talk about absolute value, what I'm really talking about is distance without concern for direction. Um, essentially, cars think in absolute value. Cars can tell you how far that they drove, but not what direction. The GPS system inside the car itself might be able to tell you which direction you drove in, but the car itself can't do it. If you look on the dashboard, unless your car has a built-in GPS system, you probably only have your speedometer, which tells you how fast you're going, and your odometer, which tells you how far you've gone. So cars can't tell direction, they can only tell distance. So essentially, cars think in absolute value. And because I'm making that car reference, I thought I would use a car to represent uh, something below. So essentially, 4 and negative 4 just represent different places on the number line. So if I'm here, I'm at positive 4. And if I am here, I'm at negative 4. But if I start at 0, the only difference between how far I travel is what direction. So I've got my little car here. It's actually my son's. I hope he doesn't mind that I took it. And I'm going to go to the number 4. So to get there I have to cross by 1, 2, 3, 4 barriers. So if I were to say what is the absolute value of 4, I would say that it took me 4, uh, I had to go through 4 checkpoints to get there. Now if I'm going to go to negative 4, I'm going to start at 0 again, as long as you start at the same place, and then I'm going to go to negative 4. So I go through 1, 2, 3, 4 checkpoints again. So essentially the absolute value of 4 and the absolute value of negative 4 are both 4. You should always get a positive answer when you have absolute value because it just represents how far you went and not what direction you went. Now, let's look at an example of the type of question that you might see. You will see x, uh, the absolute value of x is equal to 7. To solve this, all you have to do is break it into two, pro uh, into two problems. The first assumes that my car is starting at 0 and going towards 7, so I'm going to write x is equal to 7. The other option is that my car is actually going the other direction. It's going this way. So when it goes 7 in this direction, it actually ends up at negative 7. The nice thing about this is that it makes the answer very easy uh, to set up. So what I want to do is put both of my answers, once I get x by itself, which it already is here, uh, in parentheses. So, x, uh, so my answer set looks just like this. And this. Now I get to use the brackets, I guess, just to show that they're answers. So let's look at another one, one that's a little bit more complicated. So base, oh, by the way, as a quick reference, if x is by itself, just pick the positive and negative of uh, the 7, and you have both answers that you need. Now for this type, I have to solve an actual equation. So in the first uh, place, the card tells me that it goes x plus 5, and it ends up at 12. The problem is it doesn't know if it ends up at 12 or negative 12, which would be down here. So we're going to adjust for both of those possibilities. So I'm just going to write x plus 5 equals 12 and take the absolute value away. This represents him knowing what's going on and ending up at 12. The other possibility is he goes x plus 5 and he ends up at negative 12. Like I said, he has no idea what direction he's gone in, so I just had to adjust for it. From here, I just solve the one-step equations. Minus 5, so x is equal to 7, and if I do minus 5 here, x is equal to negative 17. So be very careful. Once you start adding things to the mix, uh, you're not going to get the answer and then the negative of that answer like you did in the first one. So you'll notice that this isn't 7 and negative 7. When I take 5 away from negative 12, I get negative 17. So split the problems up. My answer set looks like this, by the way. Uh, and then I can go on from there. Let's look at another one just to sort of get the feel going. Now in this case, I have 3x, or 3 times x, if you've forgotten that, I hope not at this point, uh, equals 9. So all I'm going to do is make one statement that says the car knows exactly what it's talking about, and the other saying that although it didn't lie to me, it really has no clue of direction. So I had to, all I have to do now is just solve these two equations. I'm looking for something real fast as I'm working. I mean, technically the answer shouldn't be in brackets. It should be in this form, but I can't draw those very well, so 
I'm going to use brackets even though mathematically it's weird. Either way. Go back to solving these. That was my tangent moment for this video. There's always one. This is 3 times x, so I'm going to divide by 3. x is equal to 3. Divide by 3 here. x is equal to negative 3. So in my little uh, face uh, profile brackets here, that's what I'll call them, my answer set should be negative 3 and 3. Now, what happens if you have a problem that has uh, two steps in it? It's very simple, not that much more complicated. The first thing you're going to do is write the problem as if the car knows what it's doing. Always keep the thing in absolute value the same, so don't mess with it. So I'm going to do 3 minus 3p. Three That's because well, it's absolute, so you use it every time. On the other side, I'm going to assume the car knows what it's doing, so I'm going to say 9. In my second set, I also write what's inside the absolute value, and then I adjust for the fact that maybe he went towards negative 9. Draw the line. To get rid of plus 3, I do minus 3. And remember, this negative has nothing to do with it. Uh, this negative has nothing to do with this 3, I should say. This is really plus 3, so you subtract. Negative 3p equals 6. Divide by negative 3 on both sides. p is equal to negative 3. On the other side, minus 3. Divide by negative 3 p is equal to 4, so my answer set would be negative 3 and 4. All I did was set it up so this one's positive and this one, uh, the answer part is negative, kept everything in the absolute value the same and I'm good. One more and then I want to show you one little bonus feature about this one and then we're going to uh, be done with the whole thing. So I could draw the line there, I don't know why I drew the line, I guess I was overthinking it. Uh, I was thinking ahead. So I'm just going to make up for my mistake and write 8m plus 10 there. And I'm going to go ahead and write the negative version. So negative 18. 8m plus 10 equals positive 18. This says the car knows what it's talking about. This says it doesn't. But it didn't lie. So I draw the line, just like you would before. Here's my m value. So this is parties over. I need to get rid of plus 10. So I subtract 10. Uh, 18 minus 10 is 8. Divide by 8 on both sides. m is equal to 1. On the flip side of that, I need to subtract 10. This gives me negative 28. I'm going to divide by 8 here. Divide by 8 here. These cancel, by the way. Um, this should give me, I'm trying to think. Yeah, okay. So negative 7 over 2, which is uh, negative 3.5. So for my answer set, I need negative 7 over 2 and 1. I tend to put them in numeric order so the littlest one is on the left and then on the right but it doesn't wholly matter but sometimes it does. It's just easier to write it out like this for me. I don't know why. So that's all you need to do. Set up the problem. Write this part down. Write it down twice if you want to. Go ahead and do that. Then make a statement that says that the car knew what it was talking about equals 18 and then the car has no idea and it's negative 18. A little bonus feature I'd like to add to this video, this is bonus content, is that you should have, no, uh, you may have noticed, you should have noticed, no way, you may have noticed that all of the questions that I've done before, they were equal to a positive number. Now in this case, it's not equal to a positive number. That's because we said that absolute values are always positive answers. So the absolute value of 4 was 4, and the absolute value of negative 4 was also 4, which means an absolute value can never be equal to a negative number. So if you see absolute value equal to a negative number, all you put is no solution. Nothing for x can make that true, so it is a lie. That's the bonus. If the absolute value is equal to negative, no solution. That's all you need to know. Hopefully the video is helpful. I'm going to do one with absolute values with uh, numbers on the outside of the absolute value on the same side uh, in just a minute. So good luck on the assignment or whatever you're working on, and uh, see you soon in the next video.